All right, uh, everyone can hear me okay? Okay. All right, sorry for the delay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, wishing you all a very blessed and a fruitful 2024. Uh, trust you had a good Christmas and a good New Year. Uh, so looking forward to this semester. This semester is, uh, I'm going to be teaching on the timeless principles for the workplace. Uh, we're going to be learning a lot about principles, uh, organizational development, and all of that. So uh, before we begin, let's start with a word of prayer. Right? Uh, maybe one of us can pray, please. Go ahead. Francis. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. We are gathered in your presence, Lord. Lord Jesus, we are going to study about a new subject, a new course, Lord. Please be with us. We need your presence. Lord Jesus, please help our pastor to uh, teach us uh, to unveil the mysteries of your scripture, Lord. Thank you for your with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Francis. All right. So uh, I have po posted the PDF on the stream, uh, the Timeless Principles for the Workplace. So feel free to download it, and then you can just follow along as we study together. Um, the main purpose of this topic, it's a very wonderful topic, and it's a topic which it really doesn't matter which, what our age is, which sphere of influence we are in, right? So we're going to be talking about concepts, theories, um, ideas about management, organizational development, um, entrepreneurship, leadership. And I think wherever we are, right, whether we're students or in the workplace, these are principles that will continue from ages to ages, meaning it will not change these principles, right? So now it's 2024, 2034 also these principles are valid. And towards even th throughout eternity, through life, no matter where we are, these principles are timeless. So when we say timeless, it means it's not like, you know, okay, 10 years or 20 years back, we used this. Now we don't use it anymore. No, the principles that we're going to study transcend time, place, people, culture, it doesn't matter what changes around us. These principles are constant, right? So even as we study, we're going to uh, look at how, when we study all these principles, we will realize that not only is it beneficial for our personal life, but also our work ethics, the way we work, the way we function, family, uh, we'll be able to manage all of this uh, as believers, right? Uh, and then we're going to be talking about also now, if we are in a workplace setting, there's going to be corruption. Not everyone are going to say praise the Lord to you. Right? Everyone are going to be, right? uh, there's going to be malpractices, wrong methods, there'll be oppression, there'll be favoritism. So there'll be so much in a, in a work environment. So how you and I can apply these principles use it in our life and be fruitful for the kingdom of god right so uh we're going to start off with chapter one uh even as we start um i want to keep this always open if you have any questions feel free to stop me and no question is a wrong question right? any question you can ask me uh you can also type it in the chat and um you know we can answer them together right so let's begin chapter one with personal vision and purpose. Now we looked at this personal vision and purpose in uh, fulfilling God's purpose for your life. And, you know, we looked at personal vision. We looked at purpose. Uh, you know, some of us maybe in college right now. We are in college. Then we may enter into the workplace, right? Or some of us may already be in the workplace, and you know there are you're going through certain things in the workplace. But here are certain, you know personal vision and purpose that you and I must have as believers, right? Number one, remember that you and I were made for a purpose. We got to discover it and we got to live it, right? Uh, let's read Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Go ahead. Anybody can read Ephesians 2 and verse 10. 
Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 God has made us what we are and in our union with Christ Jesus he has created us for a life of good deeds which he has already prepared for us to do God has created us or he has designed us for a purpose and this purpose he has created and he has prepared us to do it now what does it mean to he has prepared us it's not like okay god has created us for example god has created you to be an engineer it's not like he's prepared you to be an engineer there are preparations that we have to do right so remember this when god has a purpose it's 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 always a two twofold twofold book right number one we have a general purpose we have a specific purpose so what is the general purpose general purpose is basically all of us believe in jesus we are created to know god we are created to worship god but we all have a specific purpose as individuals right so god may have called some of us as you know engineers some of them as doctors some of them as prophets some of them and uh, you know entrepreneurs whatever god has called you for it is important to understand that you and i must have this personal vision you got to discover it right uh, you say okay god i know that i have these gifts i have these callings i need to discover it and when i discover it i begin to live it right? and and it's very important why because when we discover a vision we are walking with certain principles in life and we're walking with certain ideas and certain plans in your mind the book of proverbs is so beautiful it says if you don't have a plan you're like a man on the road who's looking left and right don't know where to go right proverbs says that right if you're if you don't have a plan it's like a man who starts building a house and he doesn't know how the house is going to look towards the end james says it's like you look in the mirror you don't know how you look right so it's very important that we discover understand the vision right discover that and live it right now as we discover and we live it these principles is what will help us to stand on good ground right many a times you know we we see people who are ceos or business leaders entrepreneurs why is it that they fall they started off well 10 years down the line the business is good it's growing they've developed the business but why why do they fall it's because they've not stood on solid ground their work ethics may be very good but their personal life is a failure or sometimes their personal life is very good the work ethics failure right so when when we look at these timeless principles remember that all these principles whether it is personal whether it's family whether it is workplace so going on further on uh, we will look at a lot of you know entrepreneurship uh, you know uh, goals and uh, principles while starting a business what what is it that you and i must have right so another important thing is we must not separate our life like by saying okay this is full time ministry this is no ministry or i'm in business so you never separate your life that way and you say okay whether i'm here in the working in the church whether i'm working in the business in the corporate sector i am doing ministry as unto the lord right so let's let's look at the first point here foundation and the lord jesus was uh, spoke very beautifully about the foundation and and i always say right uh, the foundation is the most important aspect in a building without the foundation the the building is not going to stand so let's read matthew chapter 7 24 through 26 matthew chapter 20 matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 26 therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them i will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man 
who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Mm. See, the Lord Jesus is so wonderfully explaining this to the disciples. He's saying, the foundation on what you build on is what really matters. Right? He's saying here, in this entire portion that we read, a wise man builds his house on the rock, but a foolish man builds his house on the sand. And so, very important, what is Jesus implying here? He's saying, what you build on matters. Right? So at a young age, for example, right? Well, look at look at the life of David. At a young age, he had certain principles. What he had this heart of okay, God is the one who protects me. God is the one who gives me strength. Remember that he's going in front of uh, Goliath. What does he say to King Saul? He says, King Saul, don't worry, because God gave me the strength to defeat the lion and the bear. So we see that he had his principles. He was probably 13, 14 years old. But his principles were right. All through, when, even when he becomes a king, he says, God, should I go for this battle? Should I go? Should I not go? Right? So you and I, our, our foundation, what you build on, really matters. And how you build that foundation will, will show you how, you know, will basically make you stand as you grow in the ways of the Lord, right? Your spiritual foundation is very, very important. Here the Lord Jesus is saying, good foundations will keep you solid. What is a good foundation? Those that are, those that are standing on the rock, right? Uh, what is a weak foundation? Those that are? Standing on sand, meaning now it doesn't mean literally standing on the sand. It only means that you're. If so, if you take, talk to an engineer, you tell him, "I want to build three floors," and if his foundation is only five feet down, something is wrong. He's got a foundation, but it's not enough. Right. So what you build on is very important. It says here, good foundations for your professional life are important. Take time to lay a good foundation professionally right now for example you know uh, if you look at ministry now uh, during those days ministry was okay you go out on the street you evangelize you start a church and the church is formed but nowadays church is very different church is an organization and it's a ministry it's both right so if you look at every church almost every church in the city they have stuff Yes or no? Right? One pastor can't do everything. They have staff. And so the moment you have staff, you, it becomes an organization. It's a ministry, but it's an organization also. right? And here it says, take time to lay a good foundation professionally. So whether you are, you and I are planning to join the corporate sector as, as your profession, or you're joining, you're trying to join ministry, take time to lay a good foundation. Right. What would that time be? Have you ever thought of that? Right. Take time to build a foundation. What 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 time is is it is he talking about here? Is it okay, wait for five years and then start building? Or wait for ten years and then start building? Or what does it refer to? When you say take time means when you when you when when you think of it in the natural, you're building a foundation. The, the civil engineer, the person who's looking after it, make sure that the foundation is built in the right measurement, that the right amount of stones and whatever has to be done is done, the right amount of uh, you know water is put in at the right time. Right? It takes time. But what you build on this foundation is what will stay. Right? So, for example, uh, you know, I remember we went to when we went to Mangalore in 2018. Um, we were about maybe five or six of them, or ten of them maximum. So I remember we I called for a meeting and I said, "Okay, we are ten of us. 
I'm setting some rules. They were very, see, they don't know me, I don't know them. Right? It was just probably one or two weeks in Mangalore. See, I'm setting some rules. Number one rule, don't tell me about this pastor, that pastor. I don't want to know. Number two, no gossip. If you have a problem, you come and tell me. You have a problem with somebody else, it's going to be there. We are people, right? There will be misunderstandings. All that is going to be. But don't gossip. You come and tell me. Number three, if you want to go to places, you want to move out, you feel that you know you're not interested to be here, feel free to go. And even if you want to be part of APC and you want to attend other you know meetings and all of it, feel free. Right? So I put on a whole list. Right? Uh, uh, mainly it was about character and uh, using your gifts in the right way. So many times, you know, our, our church folks have, you know, they have come to me and they said, you know, about uh, about this person, they try to tell me, but they stop. Why? Because the principles already said. So there are people in the church who came up to me and said, I heard that uh, in this, you know, as a pastor, you don't listen to other pastors. I mean, you don't talk about other churches. I said, no, I don't talk. I don't want to waste my time talking about others. I'm looking at what I am doing. So the reason I'm sharing this is because you're setting the principles right. You're setting your standards, right? So the, in between, there were problems, difficulties, but they knew this is how he will do it. This is how APC will do it. Very simple, right? Are you getting what I'm saying? Right? And when you set those in the beginning, you're standing on good foundation. Right? Uh, take time to effort to lay the foundation. In each transition in life, as you move from one phase to the next, prepare to lay a good foundation for the next phase as well. So that the person who's going coming up next can build on that and improve it. Right? It's basically home renovation. Right? You build a house, right? you built a nice house. Now, 20 years down the line, the house is old. Right? No matter how, 20 years before, it was very nice. But now it's old. But the foundation is still strong. Don't worry. The, you talk to the engineer, the engineer will say, don't worry, sir. Another 50 years, this house will stand. You do some renovation on the house to make it look nice. So basically, when you are transitioning from one phase to another, you should be able to, you know, uh, uh, when you transition to that phase, make sure that you give it when you hand over to another person, it is at a better level. right? So they can take it to the next level. Very important here, do the important work first and then plan for comforts. Right? Uh, you know, I remember many, many years back, I asked one young man, I think he was a young man, meaning uh, his early 30s, I asked him, why did you choose to become a pastor? Oh, why, 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 how come you become a pastor out of all the things? You know, you, you are a uh, master's in, uh, I think he was doing master's in engineering or something. I said, why did you choose to become a pastor? He said, oh, brother, I didn't. I saw all, all the pastors in the city. I, I was noticing pastors. They have a relaxed life. You know, they, they wake up anytime. They do whatever they want to do. They go for a couple of house visits. They go home and rest. So I didn't want to go and sit in an office from morning to evening and, you know, just struggle when I can just do something much more comfortable. Remember, it is important that, you know, firstly, it is important to work and then look for comforts. Uh, when we work hard, comforts will come automatically to us, right? It should not be the other way around. Because of comfort, I'm doing this. God expects us to work hard, work hard, right? That, that's, that's a, that is God's design is for us to work, right? And so uh, when we work, uh, make sure that we lay a good foundation professionally. There are certain professional skills uh, that are relevant and useful regardless of which area of work we may be in, right? For example, communication. Now, whether you are a pastor, 
whether you are a manager, team leader, no matter what your profession is, you have to talk to people. Yes, you may be a HR, you may be a trainer, any profession. You may be a housewife, you still have to talk to people. Communication is important. Two, professional writing. Right? So if you're in the workplace, you got to write emails. Right? So improve that. Right? You, you learn, you improve, you uh, plan how you're going to write your emails. Time management for productivity. Right? Managing your time. Four, problem solving. How to, prob how to solve problems. Decision making skills. Now, as you go up the ladder, especially in a professional uh, setting, there'll come a time when, even in ministry, right? So uh, everything we're going to talk about, we're going to right, see it both ways, ministry and in the corporate. So if you look at decision making, as you join a company, initially you may not have to make any decisions. But imagine you become a team leader. The moment you become a team leader, you will have to be able to make decisions. Now you can't say, oh, I'm not sure how to make these decisions. No, we must develop the skills, right? Uh, when, when I took up this certain responsibilities at office, I was like, oh man, now I have to make decisions. Now I don't know if the decision is right or wrong. Right? I was too young. Right? Of course, I worked in the corporate sector, but then this is a different setting. Right? Is it the right decision? Is it the wrong decision? But over time, we learn that, right? Decision making. Then, uh, understanding of finance, negotiation skills, planning, organizing, and leading are useful, right? Planning, organizing, and leading. You plan what you want to do, you organize teams, you organize people to get it done, and then you lead lead by example right and even as we do all of this remember to gain knowledge and develop skills right so for example right now right now right in a time we are in uh, we've got so much right we've got ai ai can do so much it does so much you know i remember uh, i was preparing the ppt for some uh, for the youth uh, conference that we went for and um, it took me 10, less than 10 minutes. Right? Now, if AI wasn't there, I'm sure it would have taken me at least two and a half hours to three hours. 10, 15 minutes, it was done. Because I had to put in the context and all of it. But it was done. Why? Because it's easy. Why would I want to sit and search? Of course, sometimes what I do is I do search for images in uh different uh you know google platforms i, I search for good images uh, but otherwise ai does everything uh, so for example you just say i want this ai will pull up like maybe 500 600 images of what you want so life has become easy now why why imagine i as a as a leader and right, or each one of us as leaders we say i don't know how to use it it it, it means that we are not in a place of learning. We must be able to learn, gain knowledge, develop skills, relevant skills, whether it's a preaching, teaching, communication, email writing, leadership skills, organizational skills, right? Uh, communication skills, very important, right? And whether, again, whether if it's ministry, whether it's uh, a corporate business, or whether you're starting your own, if you're starting your own business, it's another level of, uh, you know, all of this that we need skills, but we need them, right? So your personal priorities are foundational. Let's read Mark 12 and verse 30. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Mm. Your personal priorities are foundational. Now, we talked about a good foundation, right? Now, what does the word priorities mean? We all have priorities, right? We set priorities in our life. 
So let me give you an example. This is just an example, right? For some of them, Apple iPhone is a priority. For some of them, a good guitar is a priority. For some of them, a good shoe right, is a priority. Right? Uh, recently, I, was, I remember I was talking to my brother. My brother was saying he had bought these shoes. And the moment I heard the cost, I said, what? To wear on your leg, you bought such a expensive <laughs> shoe. But priorities, right? That's his, his priority. So we all have different priorities. Right. So what is our personal priorities? That is important. It's foundational. Right? Uh, so as you grow up and as you mature in the things of God, we must have personal priorities set in our life. Right? For my priority, for example, is I have to get up in the morning, spend time in God's Word. The priority, whether people say do it, don't do it, whether it's Christmas, whether it's New Year, whether it's 24, 2024, 2026, doesn't matter. As long as I'm there, I will do it. It's priorities. And so if you set priorities and, and walk with those priorities, your foundation becomes very strong. You get what I'm saying? Right now, it doesn't mean these priorities have to be very big. Start small. Right? Start small. Your priorities can start very, very small. So one of the priorities I do is I tell my, I spend time with my children, no matter what. I may be half asleep, but I'm there sitting. Right? So you know they have their tests today. The letter to my son has gone for his test. So yesterday I was teaching him maths. Now that maths for me was <laughs> two, 16 divided by two. And so I and he's you know counting. I say, God, please help me. No, but it's a priority. You gotta do it. Right? Uh, why? Because family, children. And there'll come a time when children will move on. There's never there's not going to come a time when you know my kids will say, please come and sit with me. No, they'll have friends that they're gonna go with their friends, they'll have other things to do. But when I set my priorities on them and I say, Okay, this has to be done. What am I doing? I'm making a good foundation. I'm setting a good foundation, right? Uh, in addition to laying a good and spiritual and professional foundation, remember that personal character, values, and attitudes are important. You know, there are some of us who can really work, 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 and work. Right? can work 10, 12 hours a day, comfortable doing that. But when it comes to personal character values, personal values and attitudes, we may fall in those areas, right? So these areas are also very important. Knowing and establishing your personal priorities are important. So if any of us, you know, if we haven't set personal priorities, I would encourage you, set those priorities. Right? Uh, it could be small, but over time, you will see that it becomes a habit and it becomes a foundation that you stand on. I love what um, happens in the book of uh, Deuteronomy and Joshua. Joshua says, teach the next generation. Don't do the mistake that the other generation made. Teach the next generation, the things of God. Lay the foundation for them. They may not understand, but you teach them. Right? Put them, put those scriptures on the doorposts of your house. And when your children ask, what does that mean? You, you speak to them and tell them, this is what God did in their lives. What is that? You're setting priorities. You're raising up a good generation. If loving God, worshiping Him, and serving Him are a priority, then that as a cent then you will keep that as central and try to work your professional activities around that priority. Right? Now, it's nothing wrong to work eight hours in the office. Right? Everyone, most of them do that, right? 90% of us are working nine to five. 
But when it comes to priorities, if, if we have Jesus as the center of our life, in office, we are working, we, we know that, hey, I'm working because of the Lord, because God has blessed me. And then we begin to, everything that we do is, you know, it's surrounded because of the priority that I, I belong to Jesus. Right? He is the central. If family is important, then you will make choices that gives precedence to your family over opportunities that may take that may take your time away from your family. You need to know what is important for you and be clear on the list of your priorities. As I said, priorities vary for each other. Right? So you need to know what is your priority. I need to know what is my priority. Right? And when we do that, really, it's, it's, it's going to really build a strong foundation for your life. Right. Uh, and then you will notice, you, you'll realize that, hey, three years has passed and I've been praying or I've been doing this for the past three years. And you feel, you will know, you will recognize. See, Jesus says you'll, you will bear fruit. Right? It's not like we are doing all of this and we'll not see fruit. We will see the fruit. Right? Where we set priorities, we will see the fruit in our life may take time, but we will see it. It's like going to the gym. You go to the gym the first week, it's not like the muscles are all big and bulged out and it's only one week. Right? And then you go for one month, you feel like giving up. And somehow you extend to six months, get on to one year, two years. After one year, it becomes a habit. It becomes you don't have to say, oh man, I have to go. To, you'll be excited to go to the gym. Two years, three years, five years, and, and, and probably about two to three years, you'll see a change in your life. The way you walk, the way you eat, the way you, your, your body, everything changes. Why? Because you worked for it. The same way, when we set priorities, when we say, God, I'm putting you the center of my life, all the other things will work around you you're setting a good foundation right any questions any thoughts right everyone with me okay okay we'll do this next point and we'll take a break okay be clear about non-negotiables right luke's 962 let's read that luke 962 But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Mm. Now, there are some things you and I cannot sell out on, right? Oh, oh, for the sake of money, for the sake of benefits, uh, or for the sake of anything, you need to have non-negotiables, right? What is the meaning of negotiable? Change, yes, yes. If you go to a store and you see the, you know, you want to buy something and you say, the, the storekeeper says it's 1,000 rupees. You say, hey, come on. How can you say it's 1,000 rupees? You got to reduce it. He says, okay, it's negotiable. I will negotiate that rate for you. I'll give it to you for 800 rupees. You say, okay, fine. So what has the storekeeper done? He's negotiated from his original cost. But some storekeeper says, you do what you want. I'm not going to negotiate that amount. Right? So you and I as believers must have non-negotiables. That means if people come and say, can you do this? And you know that it's not in line with God, and you know that it is against God's word, you have to be able to say no. It's a non-negotiable. You cannot say, uh, okay, I'll think about it, right? or uh, give me two days' time, give me a week's time, I'll let you know. No, it's a non-negotiable. So what are some of those non-negotiables? Areas in our life are not up for bargain. They are integrity. Number one, integrity. To walk in integrity is a non-negotiable. If people come and say, you know, as uh, uh, you may be in the corporate sector, you're 
boss will come up to you and say, hey, you, you change this so that our team will get higher, higher points or, uh, and then we'll be the best team. And so all of us can get the rewards for being the best team. What would you do at that time? Now again, we talked about it, right? This is office. This is not uh, praise the Lord gang. This is office. So the, the boss will say, just make the change in this report. If you make the change, if you agree to it, the entire team will benefit and we will all get rewarded as the best team. What would you do? What, was, what did you do? It sounds good, no? Oh, man. All I have to do is change a few things in this report. The boss is happy. Team is happy. I am also rewarded. I am also happy. All three of them are happy. But one person is not happy. God. <laughs> so non-negotiable. What, what is it you're going to do? Say no. Right. What if I lose my job? That's OK. You know, we may have commitments, we have a lot of things to do, but it's a non-negotiable. You cannot negotiate those kind of things because it's integrity. God is watching, right? Two, honesty. To be honest. Three, dealing fairly and honoring God with your money. Right? Honoring God with your money. It's a non-negotiable. You, 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 you and I earn. God said. You have to give one tenth of it, and it's an honor to God. It's a non negotiable. Now, again, this is a choice, right? People say, No, I don't have to give, still, God will bless me. Okay, but the word says you have to give, right? Then, treating people with respect. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Yes, you got to stand for something. And I, I very clearly remember it was, uh, I think I was, I was in Bible college in the hostel. Uh, and I've shared this example, I think. Uh, all the boys were, we, we all stayed together in the hostel. And, uh, and so one day the principal, uh, that time it was another person, uh, he called all the boys, he said, sit down. And he was talking to us, and he said, Do all of you get up for prayer in the morning? And so, oh, yes, sir, we all get up. We all wake up, and we all, okay. Now I knew who gets up, who doesn't get up. I'm sitting there in the class. I said, I don't want to be somebody who's, I said, I'll keep my mouth shut. I don't want to <laughs> say anything. Then after that, I just kept quiet. I, I didn't say anything. Then this, the principal came up to me and he asked me, well, how is it in hostel? Do everyone get up? I said, no. I, now, I could have said yes and saved the whole <laughs> team. I said, no. Why? Because one, I didn't want to lie. Two is integrity, honesty. Right? Uh, and they all were so upset with me. How can you say? You could have just said yes. I said, how can I say yes? We are in Bible college. How can I say something that's wrong? Right? I'm not in a corporate, uh, in a normal college. I'm in Bible college. Bible, the Ten Commandments, one is don't lie. What are you saying? <laughs> how can I lie? I'm breaking the Ten Commandments first. <laughs> so, so it became a problem. And they all disliked me and they you know they they were very upset very upset imagine you enter bible college nobody talks to you everyone just turned their face nobody spoke to me for more than a month i was alone in the bible college and nobody spoke nobody told me okay this is there that is there okay we have to go here nothing it was very sad it was very i was feeling very alone but i said god i stood for what is right he can say, you know, whatever they want. I stood for what is right. But in the end, God will honor you for what you do. It's a non-negotiable. Right? 
and i was able to you know uh, later on was you know god opened doors for me to go to different places and minister to different places still a bible call student and it was not because i knew everything nothing i knew so sometimes when we have these non negotiables you know, on the outside it may look like oh you know, people may mock you ridicule you but god is proud of you god says hey he has stood for something that is right so i got to honor him remember today's uh, last week's uh, yesterday's sermon take god at his word his word says i will place double honor on my children right psalm 72 so uh, so be clear of non negotiables whenever bosses say do things that is in violation to the rules say no right. all right we'll take a break and we'll come back and we'll continue from here thank you <laughs>